Well, I'd say I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Um, I found absolutely nothing that I didn't love about it, and everything that I did love about it was a big deal. So we just hit gas prices of $4.24 a gallon today. And in celebration of that, I'm going to take my Urban Glide Ultra up into the foothills to Crest Creek. It is my favorite hike. I have not been able to do it for a couple years now because of the cost of gas to get there and back. It's 40 minutes round trip, so it's not insignificant. All right, the bike battery is at 50% right now. I'm gonna go to Power Assist 1. That's the, the only level that I really ever feel like I need. And again, this does not have a throttle. It is only Power Assist, which means I don't get to poop out halfway there and decide I wanna use the throttle. The seat is fantastic. I did not have a sore crotch. I didn't have a sore tailbone. It has a spring in it which means that when you go over big bumps it doesn't hurt your tailbone and it has a front shock so that your wrists aren't hurting it is a i think they call this a mid-gear it means that the motor is not in the tire hubs in the wheel hubs first looking at it you wouldn't automatically think electric bike because it's it's um in line with the frame which i like i don't like to advertise that it's electric I do have my bike lock, but because of how big the bike is, I don't know that this small of a lock is gonna work. I may need a more hefty chain, and I do get nervous about the security part of this. If you have left the bike for a significant period of time, I don't know what the cutoff is, but I have found that if I leave it for an hour, for instance, I cannot turn the power back on I then have to use the lock for the battery, pop the battery out, turn the power on there. That is I have my yoga mat strapped to the luggage rack, and I have my flasher on, and then I will put on my orange vest as well. The bike does have built-in flashers and a built-in headlamp. I have not used those yet. These the fenders work really well. We had rain during a tropical storm, Hillary, and the fenders have worked both for rain and mud. So always make sure you're in a low enough gear when you're going to a hill in order to be able to protect your motor instead of being in such a large gear that the motor is kind of chugging out trying to propel you. So make sure to still use those gears as if it was a normal bike. Okay, here I am in a very loose little gravel pit. I have geared down to probably about a five, but I wanted to show you, still only power assist one, and here I am in sand, wet sand, and shifty gravel, and one-handed, I'm doing just fine, I'm not having to put any effort into it, but I did gear way down, just like I would have if this was a conventional bike. So I've got mud, I've got gravel, and I've got uneven terrain. I am using both hands, but I'm able to get up and down as long as it's reasonable and within my skill set to balance, it will push me through it. I'm at about a gear five in my actual gears and I'm on a power assist one I can feel the little bit of suction on the tires but there's no tipping over there's no oh darn it what was I thinking now might I pop my tires because there's probably glass in here yeah probably but if all we're if all we're measuring is whether or not I can get through it whether or not there's enough juice, whether or not it stays manageable and controllable, if that's what I'm judging, then it has plenty. I don't know if I want to go through the water. That's going to be muddy, muddy. I'm going to turn it up power assist too. Let's see what happens. Mud, 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 deep, 
deep mud. Okay, so that was power assist two. And I think I'm at like a four or a five in my actual gearing. Hey guys, so I'm at my midway point and I wanted to talk about my reaction so far. And my reaction so far is this bike is perfect in every way. If you want an electric bike that has everything, it has traction, it has power, it has maneuverability, it has a nice body position, it has a nice seat, it has a good spring, it has good brakes, all of those things. It has been spades. If there was one thing I would change about this bike, it would be to have half a notch less power on its bottom level of power. And the reason for that is that I would like the opportunity to push a little more to get a little bit more exercise on this bike because it's just a beast. It's so good, it's so easy that I have to keep reminding myself to track my knees right. And the only time I really feel any kind of forward um, effort is if I have a really, really strong headwind. I have a mild headwind right now. And so I'm not really feeling it. I'm feeling it a little bit, a little bit of effort. But unless I had a really strong headwind or a really steep hill, I don't feel a lot of effort with this bike. So it's, it's a little too perfect. The only thing I would ask, take the power level down a little bit, guys, so that I have the option to get some exercise. It is really, really difficult to find a spot to attach your bike to with a conventional bike lock because of how fat the bike is, because of how awkward it is, um, that is really tricky because you want it on a closed loop. You don't want to put it on the seat. You don't want to put it on the handlebars because those can all be pulled off. You don't want to put it on the shocks because that can come off. You need a closed loop part of the frame to attach it to. pretty good sized hill that I came up and I found that learning the assist versus the gears on a hill was not super intuitive but that's the case I feel with each new electric bike or even with each individual bike you have to learn the gears um, it took me an hour to get here And now I'm going to go for a little hike. I haven't had a workout yet. And so I feel like if you have an autoimmune disorder and you just need some time outside, this Urban Glide Ultra is fantastic. I think if you do have an autoimmune or a disability, you do want the throttle. So I think you'd want to go with the Pro instead of the Ultra. I like it without a throttle. Um, I think there's so much assist with it that you can get yourself out of most sticky situations without a throttle. However, again, if you have a disability and um, you could maybe lose the use of your legs or become very weak, a throttle in that situation is priceless. The AdMotor Grand Tan trike, if you have a disability that involves weakness. I think that if you're just riding in town is your better option because it's very stable. Um, it has a throttle, super easy to maneuver. And again, if you lose, if you have that much incapacitation and unpredictability in your ability to pedal, I think you might also want the trike. So that's the Ad Motor Grand Tan that we've tried. Um, for this bike, super fun. Um, I'm really grateful to have it in my arsenal. And if I had somebody else offer me a bike that had a little less power, but all the other features of this Urban Glide Ultra, I think it would be the ideal bike for me.
All right, guys, I'm on a really scary uh, country highway, which has no medians at all. This is this really soft, deep gravel is my median. I, there's no way I can get up on that road and ride safely. So, if you have to ditch the road for safe safety reasons, these not quite fat tires. They're not fat tires. They're they're broad tires. They're not quite mountain bike tires because they don't have the stud. Um, pattern. They're a road tire that's quite thick though and has a lot of give and a lot of bounce. And so I've geared down to probably a six in my gears. I'm still at a number one on my assist and I'm getting through this and I'm going to make it home safe because I'm not going to have to get on the road. But the soft deep gravel is not taking my tires out from under me and it's not taking so much effort that I can't get through it. Same road. Going down a two track now. No problem with the slightly packed dirt. It's quite bumpy, but the shocks in the handlebars and the spring in the seat make it so that it's really quite comfortable. I have geared down once again. I'm at about a six here and a power one assist. Much safer down here in the burrow pit than it is up there on the road. All right, we just about hit 60 miles as a range for one full charge. And so pretty good, 60 miles for one charge. I think if I hadn't been going up and down in the ranges of the assist, I would have got more than that, but I was testing everything. So it's amazing. I think it's a little too much power most of the time, but that power when you get into trouble is so nice to have. So I'd rather have it than not have it.